Hey there, what is up, Comics World? This is Rob Casey, I'm Splendopia. Checking out this OBS feature. Gonna see if I'm live streaming. Streaming on my channel, Splendopia. Um, let's see. So now, what we're doing today, first let me tell you about my project. My project is Cyborg USA, now available on Indiegogo. Um, you can go to cyborgusacomic.com uh, enter your email address and you will get a free PDF of the first issue of Cyborg USA. Cyborg USA uh, is also available issues one and two on Indiegogo and then there's also some exclusive uh, issue one variant covers um, and uh, a cool feature our artist Pablo Romero will draw you as a character from our Cyborg universe, Cyborg USA. Uh, that's here as Cyborg Eyes Yourself. Uh, bear with me for the boomer stream, I don't know when this started. I'm, now I'm going to YouTube to see if uh, it's working, see if I'm actually streaming. Uh, so if you know that I'm streaming, you just see that I'm streaming. And you'd be like, Rob, you're streaming. It does look like I'm streaming. Yeah, there I am. I'm live. Nobody's watching in the chat. Who knows how long it's been going on? Did it start in an embarrassing time? It probably did. Uh, but what I'm doing right now, wait, let me do this. I'm going to do this too. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share this to Twitter, and hopefully, all uh, uh, the people will flock in. Um, doo -doo -doo, as I unbox these videos or unbox these toys on this video, this is an unboxing video. <laughs> this is why I don't stream, guys. Uh, I barely know what I'm doing, and. It's, uh, it's, not, it's so far, so far not so good. Um, but nobody's really watching yet. Uh, so technically I, you know, I'm, I'm still in pretty good shape, I think. Uh, doo -doo -doo. so I'm going to post this up so people know. Out and, uh, up. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to disregard that for the rest of the time out. People can, uh, check in, people can check in the chat. Uh, I don't know if I'll see you guys pop up in the chat. Maybe I will. I'm still trying to figure out how this works. Um, you know, usually when I get on streams, uh, or at least lately I've been getting on other people's streams to promote my book, Subword USA. Uh, but I'm, I thought today would be a good time to do something that I've wanted to do for a long time, which is unbox these uh, cool toys. This is uh, something I bought um, I don't know, almost a year ago, maybe. This is the X-Men uh, Marvel Collector's Edition, the original X-Men in their original uniforms from issue one, Cyclops, Scott Summers, Marvel Girl, Jean Grey, Iceman, Bobby Drake, uh, Beast Hank McCoy, and Angel Warren Worthington versus Magneto, Eric Lancer. Lynchurer? How do you say his name? That's the one. The Earth's most powerful supervillain. You know, I think I think Magneto is like one of the best uh, supervillains in comics um, of all time. Doctor Doom is prob probably the best Marvel villain, but Magneto might be the second best, in my opinion. Uh, this box set is from Toy Biz. You know, uh, the reason I got this set... Uh, and this is the kind of set that I would not normally get because usually I collect toys in the 3.75 um, scale and these toys are uh, a little bit bigger than that. Um, but, I, but I was a big X-Men fan. I was a big original X-Men fan though. Um, even though I came into it late in the 80s and 90s, um, when X-Men was like really popular, you know, I, I went back and read uh, like certain old stories um, X Factor uh, was always more appealing to me than than the main title. Although you know the main title was great, um, I just I just always I just always like really like these characters and the and the the kind of the original sort of unity of them. I like that unity of uniform. I've talked before. I've unboxed some other X Men toys, like the black and yellow uniform. I think is really cool. You know, in some ways they got back to that with the X Men First Class movies. Um, which I enjoyed uh, uh, somewhat. I mean, I guess you know they're hard, they're hard to fully enjoy. What's nice about this collector's case, and part of the reason that I haven't cracked it open yet, 
Oh man, I got the sun right on me. Um, is is you know the presentation is like very is very nice. It's this cool toy biz box. You open it up, and then uh, all the characters are displayed inside, um, kind of cut out in these pages of X Men number one. I'll pop this down a little bit. You can see on this over here. Should have popped up that glare. Oh, well. um, you can see over here uh, the X Men titles. <clears throat> These are the like the first few issues: two, three, four, uh, you know, up to seven. So all this stuff is really inspirational to to me. Working on my project, Cyborg USA, because um, you know I, I I was really inspired by these like team, by these team books. Um, uh, for for us, we're crowdfunding issues one and two. Um, the hope is to continue the series for you know a certain amount of time, like uh, twelve books is like what I have in mind total. Um, and what I've been doing with like uh, Marvel and some other classic runs is going back and looking at their like it's just like certain titles, like what did they do in the first like twelve issues? How did they um, how did they either introduce their characters to the world or reintroduce their characters to the world? You know, th this is like the like a a properties like in the 12 issues, assuming it's like a monthly release, it's their first year of existence. And like, what, you know, what, what do they establish in that first year? You know, all that stuff is, um, all that stuff are, they're questions that I've, uh, explored in trying to conceive of my own project. Um, and these guys, here's a knife. There's a terrible knife. Take a look at it. It's totally destroyed. But for our purposes, it will do well because it looks like somebody's already manipulated the tape on this box a little bit. I think it's already, it may already have been partially opened. Maybe not. Um, but we're going to do that today. So before, before, I'm like Mike Miller, before um, I crack this, if you know who Mike Miller, Mike Miller is a famous YouTube personality who likes to wave the knives on camera. Uh, before I open that up, I also want to show you this, which is a later group, the X-Men Strike Team, another box set um, that I will also be opening because these are the larger size and they, I think they look kind of complementary to the original, the old uniforms. I don't know how all these guys are going to look together, but I kind of have a feeling they're going to look pretty good together. I hope so. Um, then we got a villain up there, we got the Super Scroll, we got Strife. Um, or Talos Strife, you know, whatever. Talos is like, all those stories in the 90s, like Strife and Talos and Cable and all that stuff. Um, I'll be honest with you, like, that that was my heyday as a collector. I was never that much into that part of the X-Men lore. I was probably more into the, like, the uh, the older lore. And, uh, and it was really cool when, like, Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld and, uh, well, you know, those guys were working on X-Force, X-Factor, X-Men, um, it was making the brand uh, much more popular, but, uh, but you know, when they, when they launched X-Force 1 and, and X-Men 1, I think, um, I actually think the run leading up to that was, like, was more enjoyable, and I kind of, I kind of, like, faded out. It didn't take long to fade out after all the hype of the, of the new relaunch, and I'm kind of wondering now, because I haven't read them yet, but I've got the Powers of X and the House of X, which are really highly re recommended, and ordered the first X-Men, uh, X-Men number one titled the relaunch. So I'm, I'm curious to see like how those are. I sort of feel like it's from, at least from my experience, I'm, I'm going to have a similar experience where kind of like the build up, the build up to the relaunch is kind of the more fun part. And then, and then the relaunch is, you know, not that, not that crazy into it, but I am crazy into opening toys. Oh no, Scott fell out. All right. Immediately, uh, Cyclops fell out of the box. So pop him down here and let's see what happens if I do this. This is another reason I stopped streaming. You know, I was doing um, live streams with my phone and then YouTube made it so that you couldn't do those anymore. And I'll be honest with you, I just didn't want to live stream anymore. I was like, I don't, I don't want, I even want to do this anymore. It's not, it's not as fun for me. I did get a cable that I think I can hook my phone up to so I can move it around. But um, that didn't seem as, as practical or as fun uh, as... You know, it had been, but uh, I have been meaning to do this unboxing video for a long time. Here's here's Cyclops. I'm, I'm making him wave. Here, look at that. He's kind of waving. Um, and then there's Beast right behind him. Let's put him down. Let's play with Cyclops again since he announced he announced himself to us dramatically, like falling out of his plastic tray. Oh, 
got to be careful I don't drop all these guys. The strike team box is, is, is fairly imbalanced. The part on the bottom is like, uh, it, it looks like that has been sort of manipulated too. So it's, it wants to open up. So it wants to fall off my shelf there. Um, this, so here we go. Here's Scott. You can see quite a bit of paint imperfection, just like right out of the box. Like right here on this ruby red visor, there's a splashy yellow paint. And I noticed that before I unboxed him. Uh, it was like one of those things that was like, oh man, this, this does kind of suck. And there's another one on uh, Angel that I'll, that I'll show that, that's bothersome. Um, and so, I, you know, I don't know. I, I guess you want to say that's quality control. This, this toy came out, God, it, it probably came out about 20 years ago. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can figure it out. If anybody knows, if anybody knows in the comments, just jump right in. Ooh, this beast. Holy smokes. Okay, well, I just pulled this beast out. Notice something immediately, and I can talk about that. I'm going to see if I can find a date on this X-Men Toy Biz box. Uh, I don't see a date. I don't see a date, but my recollection tells me that this came out, like, in the late 90s or early 2000s. I think the late 90s. So this is a kind of an old set. So I have to I have to believe that um, all these these paint imperfections they would have been imperfections even back then out of the box. It's not like they it's not like they got worse over time. Um, you know, uh, Scott here is like fairly fun to play with. Although you can see this is another problem with this figure. His legs are splayed out so far that like posability is like really limited. So it's like kind of cool that he has his like you know fingers in this pose. Now oh, here's another thing, the elbow joint's a little bit tight, so be careful with these tight elbow joints when you take a figure right out of the package, because I've broken uh, action figures before trying to manipulate their elbow joints when they're too tight right out of the package. So just a word of warning. Um, but you can see he's doing like the, the two finger thing, which is like the thing he does to like press his, his hands against a visor, like he's you know, working really hard to shoot out those ruby red beams. Um, and, and that is cool. Uh, However, you know, then like, you know, whenever you're just like playing with him regular, he's like, I don't know, just kind of, kind of weird, kind of weird thing. Um, so that's the, that's the thing about action figures, you know, they, uh, they have to mold them into some shape and sometimes the shape gives them like one really cool dynamic pose, uh, but it messes up like all the other poses. And that's one thing that made me feel like this guy might be better left in the box. The, the, uh, the joint articulation is not awesome. Um. You know, sometimes you get like a, a, a mobile joint like at the wrist so you can like swivel this around more. There's not that, or at the elbow, there's not that like near the elbow or at the like glove line, which often there is. Um, so there's just like a, just just a bend feature right there. Um, and then on the other side, same thing, just one uh, knee joint. Um, you know, sometimes multiple knee joints like give you a better range of flexibility. Um, and yeah, like I said, his legs are splayed out, his arms are splayed out, he looks, looks a little bit goofy, a little bit too buff. Twists here at the mid-joint, and you can see sometimes this happens with like toys at the mid-joint, you know, if they're too exaggerated, when you twist them, the, you know, there's like a, you know, extra, like, extra stuff at the waist, I guess, or extra, like, you know, it's like, what am I trying to say? He's so he's so narrow at the waist that when you turn it, um, it doesn't it doesn't look right. Um, and then finally, I'm gonna do let's see how this works. But I'm gonna do the this is this feature is designed to pop up, so you can pop up his visor, and that's kind of cool. I mean, does that is that like what we think of Cyclops? Cyclops' face? I don't really I don't really think so. That's that's a pretty retro thing. You can see, no, it's not right. Well, the ruby red visor. It's a little paint imperfection there, but it's actually, it actually in person is not as bad as it looks on the camera right now. Now his head is as big as mine. So all in all, this figure is, is, is I, would, I would characterize this figure as not great, um, as, as okay. Uh, you know, what, what sells this pack, I think, for me is, is like uh, having all, all five of these original characters. Um, uh, but I, you know, you can see this from like outside the package before I open up, you can see that they're, that they're kind of not going to be great in that way. Um, that kept me from opening them for a long time, but now I'm opening them for you, the uh, internet and, uh, all my, all my many viewers. This guy is the beast, Hank McCoy. So beast is like, 
the thing about the thing about the original X Men, the five X Men, I love those characters. Hey, Hail, um, uh, and Beast is like one I, I especially love, and I love the blue Hank McCoy, but I also love just this like the when he's not fuzzy, like this character. I think is like it's just like it's like fun to go back to old classic comics and see this. These like giant hands, it's, you know, it's like he, he's like an ape man, really. Now he has an additional joint here. Let's see if I don't mess this up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can bend it out a little bit. Um, that's a feature that that um, that Scott does not have. Um, but honestly, I noticed. Like I said, I noticed it right out of the figure because it makes his hips like a little loose. So you shake this, and these legs are just like ever so loose. You know, like with with toys with like playability. Um, there are things that like that affect the playability, like uh, like loose joints or tight joints or just like clunky construction. Um, these fi these figures I w I would characterize as like not super playable. They're a little bit they're a little bit too clunky, a little bit too tight, alternately tight and loose, and um, uh, you know obviously like designed for just like display. Apparently. Um, but you also get this additional, you know, to give him some more posability, uh, this foot joint, and that's kind of cool because you always see like you always see Beast in these dynamic uh, jumping poses. I, I expect these figures are like probably really or somewhat good if you're an artist, somewhat helpful to like uh, imagine like more dynamic uh, action poses, um, you know, that you, that you that might not otherwise occur to you, and you can kind of. You could take this angle. This is not this is not something that like maybe somebody might intuitively draw, but it's something that you know the perspective might might be like kind of interesting or kind of fun. So I <clears throat> we got two of these figures out. I I quite like this beast um, figure. I like him a little bit more than the Cyclops figure. Um, put them both together, they look pretty good. Uh, it gives us three more three more X Men to go. I'm gonna keep talking uh, and keep doing the stream. As goofy as it is, as long as it lasts, because I have three, eight. I've got eleven more action figures to open, so I'm going to do that. <clears throat> the next one is going to be Bobby, Iceman. Now, so Iceman has a has a, a tremendous place in my heart. Um, thank, thank, hey, trying to get my us all in the shot. Uh, thanks to Spider Man and his amazing friends. That was um, that was my heyday uh, as a child. Growing up on Saturday morning cartoons with Spider-Man, Iceman, and Firestar, and one thing that's like that's like super cool about this original Iceman design is the boots. I mean, like I know why they dropped them, and certainly they look silly, but they also are amazing. They also are amazingly cool and amazingly funny. He does have a swivel joint at the wrist, and that's to accommodate these like ice balls. That I guess they appear to be. I'm trying to see if you could remove them. They appear to be molded into his hand. So he's got he's got like a snowball in one hand, and he's got a snowball in the other hand, kind of like an ice ball, like ready to go. And it does not seem like you can get them out. It seems like they are they are stuck there. But you but what you can do is you can manipulate his wrists all the way around. Um, you can throw them any which direction. He also has, I think, well, his sculpting is is way more dynamic. I mean, the, the sculpts are pretty good on this. You can see that on on this one, like, look at Scott's torso here, for example. You know, he's got the you know the riblets or whatever, and then up front, um, you know, you can see this like, you know, they took quite a bit of time to like sculpt the <laughs> sculpt his underwear in the front part of his tunic um, in a kind of interesting way, um, and you know, beast. You know, Beast's muscles are really well sculpted. Uh, and with Iceman, he's very, very, very much, very intricately sculpted. You can, oh, that's that lighting actually shows it off pretty well. Um, so that's delightful. And his head is great too. I mean, that's a great, that's a great look for Bobby, I think. Now, now Iceman, of course, is a subject of controversy from the Cena Grace uh, book where um, uh, he was turned into a gay character after years of uh, being, you know, we, we all thought a straight character just based on the fact that he dated and obsessed over girls. But, um, you know, that was, I, I, apparently that was just something we should, we should, uh, we all need to get past because, 
because Bobby's gay. Um, that's uh, it's just the fact of the Marvel Universe now. Um, and uh, I don't know. There's not much more to say about that except that it is it is it is it is fun it is fun and bizarre to see Cena Grace like uh, uh, making a lot of the complaints about his run on Iceman at Marvel that the fans were making. Um, it's validating and strange. So, yeah, I'm pausing on Bobby for a little bit because I got this, like, light here that's, like, really showing off this, like, uh, this weird, like, he, so he, it looks like he's, he's molded in translucent plastic, but then there's, like, a little blue, um, like, paint coating on it. So, uh, <laughs> Looks like Captain Fuckhead says he thinks delete, Disney is deleting messages, which is probably true. They probably are. Um, he also has... Oh, I didn't notice this on Scott. So Scott actually does have this. I didn't. I thought he didn't, but he actually does have have these these foot foot joints. And I didn't. I didn't notice that the first time, but they, but he does. It looks like they all do. Oops, Beast has them for sure. I hide, highlighted that. Looks like uh, Bobby has them on these like dope boots. I mean, this look is dope. Like, seriously, like, like, bring back the boots. I don't care if he's gay, but bring back, bring back Iceman's boots, Marvel. What are you, what are you doing, Marvel? Bring back his boots. Bring him back. All right, so, um, two down. There are three down, two to go. Uh, this is the one that popped out next, and I'll take it. This is Jean Grey, Marvel Girl. You know, aka later the Phoenix. There's a smell. There's a heavy plastic smell that I just got just now, and I don't think it was her. I think it might be. Maybe it might be like Warren's wings. I'll take a look at that when I get out. Warren's got some problems. I saw before I opened it up, so we'll get to him for a minute. Marvel Girl is not. So she's not like super, um, uh, like impressive as a figure, but she's very well, very well done. One thing I like about this is I like I like the depiction of Jean Grey with the mask, like the full head mask, like the rest of them have. I think I always thought that was like a fun look for the X Men too, just like the full head mask, and you know it makes sense why they got away from them. Like once we got to know the characters better, but as a care as a as a uh, costume design, that's always been something I, I really enjoyed. Um, you know she has like so she has this lifelike as you know as geeky sparkles on Clownfish TV would say brushable hair. So, so geeky and neon, you can come over to my house and, and brush Jean Grey's hair. Uh, it looks like she needs it. Uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit messed up. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna intervene in brushing this hair. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to take my chances. I'm not too good at brushing. I'm not too good at brushing hair. Um, but, uh, uh, anyone is welcome to come over and, and, and brush my Jean Grey's hair and we can play with these guys and. You know, you can, um, you can give me pointers on maintaining these action figures. Uh, Jean has the, you know, the, the bendy, bendy, uh, ankle joints too, the knee joints, you know, this, this hand is permanently molded in a fist, you know, so like in addition to her psychic and telekinetic powers, she can also punch a bitch, boom, um, and what, what about her face? What do we think of her face? I think it's... I like it. I like it. It's not like, it's not like, it's not like super feminine or it doesn't read totally Jean Grey, but as a piece with the rest of the set, I think it fits in pretty good. Oops. And now that leaves us one last original X-Men. Uh, Richie Rich, AKA Warren Worthington, the third angel. So yeah, so I smell. I was smelling like some weird plastic smell when uh, I got to the end of this package. I think it might be. I think it might be Angel's wings, um, which are not. They don't do not come attached to his body. So we're gonna have to do that right now. You and me, we're all gonna have to work together. Wait a second. What does this say? There's a note in the chat that I don't understand. Oh, me and Tim Pool in the same stream. Oh yeah, yeah. Me and I, I buy my beanies from the same place as Tim Pool. Um, there's a joke. There's a joke that is a little off color for a toy unboxing video because I might have kids. But um, 
like as a Twitter joke. It is a Twitter joke about Billabong caps um, that a female comedian made that I that I thought was I thought had a lot of truth to it about how she how the, the one thing that she has in common with all other women um, is a certain act that has been performed on her um, by men in Billabong hats. Uh, has been probably performed on all women by by a man in a billabong hat at some point. So I thought that was that was insightful and hilarious. Um, here is here's Warren. So what I was saying out of the package, the thing that's bo and man, this really bothers me. And this happens all the time, or a lot of the time, because they'll mold the toy in a certain color plastic, and then they'll do a paint app on the face, like a skin color paint app, and then a lot of times like something will happen to rub it and the nose it'll get rubbed off the nose so like so his his nose has like the paint app rubbed off it so that i find that like super duper aggravating when i i ordered this on ebay and when i got it that was like the very first thing i noticed that his nose was all jacked up um and it's just it's just like very it's just very disappointing because then you have to then you have to kind of be like well am i going to touch it up or am i just going to live with it i don't like it i don't like it one bit um don't really know because I pulled these out pretty quick how these are attached um, I'm just gonna guess I'm gonna guess and hope I guess right because basically they either all go on one side or they go on the other side and I think I got it right um, you know you can kind of tell because there's like there's like these circle tabs on the top and they're not on the bottom so I'm you know I'm almost 99% sure that I did it right if that is the case, um, his, you know, the wing pose ability is not that awesome. Um, they're kind of fixed up like this, and then you can raise them like that. Let's move them back a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Oops, sorry about that. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they stick out very far. Uh, this is going to, I'm going to have to, this is going to be a challenge to figure out how to display these guys because I don't know where I'm going to put them all, um, and especially with these wings going to take up a lot of space. Um, but there you go. You, you know, you can bend these wings back. You get a nice, like, kind of flight uh, situation here. And so, you know, how much fun is he to play with? He's not that fun to play with. The The wings are actually, they're actually pretty heavy. They, they, they really throw off the balance of this figure. Let's see if I stand him up, if, if there's any hope that I can stand him up. I mean, I guess I, there goes Iceman. Scoot over, Iceman. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, there's there's going to be some some pose that I can get him in while he's standing, but he really wants to tip over um, from the wings. There he is. There, there's Iceman, and that's it. That's those are the main dudes, um, the X Men that become the X Factor. Uh, so those guys are all opened up. And now, now, now I can get into this other box. So the second box is the X-Men Strike Team from an, oh jeez, from an entirely different era. Um, and, and then th these guys, so I think, I think this is like the X-Men team that came out, I, I want to say it was, I want to say it was like issue 300 or 250. Does that make any sense? Is that right? I'm not sure. I think 300. Let's see if it says on the box. Uh, not really. Um, this does have a date on it, though. This came out in 1998. So this is this is about. The, I think these both came out at about the same time. Um, Toy Biz was going strong. Uh, they released a ton of Marvel figures and a ton of X Men figures. Um, this is a cool. This is a cool case that like replicates like a. Um, Again, like I think I I think it was issue three. I think it was issue three hundred. I like really really should know, but it was like it was like that landmark issue. I had it, but it's not in my collection anymore. So I must have sold it when I was a kid. Um, and basically, like basically, you've got all these. I don't even remember the story, but you got Talos here and Super Scrawl, and he's going up against um, a a really great selection of X Men. Uh, my favorite. X-Men is in this group, and that's Forge. Um, and we don't see a lot of Forge these days, uh, but Forge is like, Forge was always like my boy, like when I was reading, when I was reading like X-Men comic books all the time in the 90s, 
I always wanted stories that had Beast and Forge in them. Um, so Gambit's there. Gambit's also very, very cool. And of course, Wolverine, Banshee, Jubilee, and Storm. Um, uh, part of the reason I bought the set is because I wanted uh, to get... Uh, I didn't have like a Storm yet and um, or a Gambit, and I wanted to get them. And it's kind of cool to get them in the blue and yellow uniform. Like I said, that's... Uh, that's that uni that X Men uniformity of like, and they're all uh, in the blue and gold is really appealing to me. Has always been really appealing to me. So I've got that open up. And hello, there we go. That's back. And here's the box. So the inside box. So the inside box like it, it comes out, but the plastic is still. Um, affixed to the back thing. So, so somebody must have opened it up at some point and taken this out, but then not like removed any of it. You can see some kind of cool features like Banshee's like uh, Ban Banshee's wings is like a cloth cape, as is uh, Talos's cape. Um, and their belts, this is kind of weird. And I'm curious to see what's underneath. Their belts are uh, fabric too. So that's, that, that's unusual for like these kind of X-Men figures. Uh, most of them have like plastic molded belts. Um, I, so these unboxing videos, they're very interesting to me. I don't know, I, I don't know how interesting they are to other people. People like watching these toys being unboxed. What I like to do when I'm doing it is talk about, talk about the experience of unboxing them and then talk about like my experience with action figures and like what I like. Um, uh, and whether I think, you know, whether I think they're good figures. Now, um, in general, I think all these figures that I'm opening today are not great figures. I, I actually prefer, like I said, like for me, the, like the G.I. Joe size, the three and three quarter inch, four inch size, that's my favorite size for an action figure. These, these, these like feel and play a little bit too big for me. I don't like the six inch ones. Um, uh, part of it's that like they take up too much space, but I, but I also feel like, I, I also have always felt like the, um, just this, like in addition to being like more fun to play with the smaller ones, they just like everything just like displays and scales uh, much better so like so even you know it's easier to make them uh, more intricate and more elaborate um, when they're bigger but I don't I don't think that 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 they're ne that that's necessarily an improvement you know? um, and I do like uh, I do to like some extent re regret getting these because I got um, I, you know I got a lot of Marvel Universe characters that were 3.75 or 4 inches and you know, they, they all display really well together, and uh, and I like them. You know, the problem with them is because they're so small, the, the joints um, are more susceptible to damage. Um, they tend to be more articulated, so there's more places that they that they uh, uh, that they can fail. You know, every point of articulation, even though it allows you to like to more posability, it's all it also um, uh, is a source of more instability. All right, so we got him. We got him out. Who do we? I'll take credit. I'll take uh, I'll take requests about who to grab up first. Um, but I don't think the stream is going to be able to keep up with me. So uh, I will pull out. I'll pull, pull out Banshee first. So Banshee is like kind of an interesting one because Banshee, I like Banshee. I already like have a figure that is pretty much this figure, but a little bit different. And I ordered him, and I thought it was the blue and yellow one, and it was actually the black and. So they, they made a bunch of these different Banshees in the in the uh, 90s. The original Toy Biz one that they had that I, that I would have preferred to buy because it fits in with some of the other guys in my collection better is like has a whistle built into it. So there's like a whistle hole in the front of the toy and you like blow on it. And I always thought that was like kind of gross and looked like bad. So I didn't buy that Banshee. I bought these other Banshees. This Banshee... Already out of the package, I can I can see a few things that are bothering me. Um, the main thing is this uh, is this this leg bend. It looks like kind of built into the package, maybe because he's been in there too long or just the way it's been styled. His legs are kind of warped out of shape. So you can see if I stand him up, I don't think I don't think he's going to stand up, just because his legs are so horribly warped. Uh, kind of. Kind of stands up with the bend over, but you can see kind of more pronounced in that way. I'm like tip this over, kind of the the way on this side, like the um, 
the bow-legged quality of them. Um, I just pushed something while I touched him. Oh, okay, so there's a button. So under his belt, I didn't notice this. I felt it when I just pushed it. There's a button. And I guess the button is to shoot up his arms. Yeah, so I just I just hit it, and his arms kind of went up, but not really that much. So that's like, I guess that's like a play feature. You push his button under the belt, and his arms go up. But it did not work very well at all. Let's try it again. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, that really sucks. Um, his cape is like really kind of like cheap, flimsy. How does it feel? Almost like a you know, like a like a like a crappy, too thick kite sort of. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm so I'm pretty disappointed with this banshee. The one positive of him is, uh, you know, they fit pretty well together. The belt throws them off a little bit, but um, you know, these guys are going to display together uh, just fine, and that's that's kind of the point is getting together a little X Men team um, with not just the original characters, but some of the other. Uh, some of the other cool ones. So let's pull out everybody's favorite um, mutant, Wolverine. So Wolverine, the, I, I've seen the, like, so I got another one of these Wolverines with uh, this play feature where he, there's like, so all these, all these figures I think are like, a lot of them are remolds. First, let me show you on the back, that belt. It says the fabric on his belt is like kind of screwed up. This guy, it's like a loose thread back there. It shouldn't really be there. So if I if I pull on that and I rip it, yeah, I can't really cut it. So I'm gonna have to cut it off if it bothers me that much. Should I do it? I don't know. The other thing too is I, I see now that the back of them that these belts are Velcro. So apparently I can take them off. I can give that I can give his belt to Scott. But what's underneath? Just like a regular kind of belt buckle belt. It looks looks like crap, honestly. Um, so yeah, so. I'm not super excited about these. I don't know what people were feeling um, in the '90s when they bought these. I think a lot of I think a lot of these never made it out of the package. Um, like frankly, the, uh, this set works a lot better on display. I don't really know. There's this thing back here. I don't really know what that's for, other than to like manipulate him going back and forth his torso joint. But I don't really think you need to do that. Very confused about this. I don't know, see if there's any instructions to tell me how to do it. But the other thing that I, that um, uh, I was getting at is is this like claw function. So th these like on these Toyvis figures like don't work very well. And this older Wolverine figure that I got that was already opened up, um, you know, you can retract the claws, but then they don't stay retracted. Yeah. Okay. So is there a click on it? Sometimes there's a click and they lock into place, and then you can shoot them out. I can't even get these to click. Uh, I'm trying to get them to retract. And they they are retracting, but they're not locking in. And I don't want to I don't want to screw with it too much and like again break them. But something something is not exactly right with that. And I don't know if it should I don't know if they sh if they should be retracting and clicking and they're not or if on this particular figure they just like didn't work properly. You know, it's hard to say. It's the kind of thing you could probably look up. I'm probably going to have to figure out. But, um, you know, this is like, this is like a, it's kind of a disappointing Wolverine. Kind of a phoned-in Wolverine. And they were making so many Wolverines back then. Um, you know, they probably didn't care. But at the same time, like, all, this Wolverine is, like, made from reused parts of all the other Wolverines. Like, this head is, is available on the, the other Toy Biz Wolverines. So it's not like this whole set. It's not like they were throwing a bunch of money at it. It, it, it was largely a set of repaints. Um, although one guy that's not a repaint is uh, is a super scroll. So let's do let's do him next, just to like kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, this guy is like this guy's like a cool nemesis of uh, of of the uh, X Men and the Fantastic Four. Um, on the back of this, there's these cards for all the X teams. Uh, uh, let's just kind of generally talk about him as a Fantastic Four villain. Uh, his weakness is his overconfidence. You know, it's like like all of us, I would say. Uh, moving through the streets with a little danger of being defeated. 
so I think, you know, what I remember about the Super Scroll is like, you know, he's like a shapeshifter who like uh, is able to assume the powers of uh, other heroes, you know, namely the Fantastic Four, I, I guess the X-Men. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember that much about him. His hands are molded into these like, this is something that's annoying with like action figures is when they're, they're molded into these like fists, but then they just like drill a hole through them. So it's just like a fist with a hole in it. Um, you know, that's not great. Even, like I said, you know, even though these figures are like bigger, 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 and more detailed, um, they're not necessarily like, uh, more desirable than like some of the smaller ones that are all, also detailed, maybe uh, like end up being more intricate because maybe they're made for collectors more. I don't even know. Yeah, the nineties the line, the toy biz line, they weren't, um, uh, th there wasn't a lot of focus on, on like playability and articulation. I think they were trying to make I think they were trying to make these a lot of these figures look really good in the box. And in fact, I think I even think that there's like one box where you can buy the, the Toy Biz X Men, where if you if you open it up, uh, their joints are all glued, like actually glued together. And that's the one with like the heroes and villains pack. Um, it's got like Sauron and uh, Magneto. Uh, I don't know that much about that, so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave my description of that there. Um, this is this line was the line that I was like interested in, but I was like out of, I was like out of comics and out of toys. I was like a, in high school um, and trying to do other things with my life. You know, I saw these things pop up on the shelves and I was like, oh, cool. I wish I was still collecting toys, but you know, uh, good thing I'm not because I'm a grown up now. Well, guess what? A couple years later, 20 years later, <laughs> I am collecting them. I don't know if this guy's mask comes off. It doesn't look like it does. It seems like it. It seems like it wants to. This is this is. I keep saying stripe. It's Talos, and it's um. I think this dude. Somebody's got to tell me how the, how this story went. Because I because like. All I all I like all all I know in that era was like everybody everybody was either cable or related to cable. That's that's like what happened. So if if a new character popped up, he was either Cable or he was related to Cable, and that's a that's a tradition that Rob Liefeld brought forward in his Major X uh, storyline, which I also haven't like read. I read the issue zero of it, but I still have that too to read. So I got to catch up on these X books after I uh, maybe unboxing these will get me excited to do it. So that's him. I mean, really, like you see the back of his hel helmet or head mask. You know, you really want to take this off. You can see that it's like, as a kid, I'd be dying to rip this off. But I think if I do, I'm going to break the whole figure. And that's going to be embarrassing. Um, it's kind of funny. You can see that his eyes are molded on the mask. But then if you tip him, you can see like the plastic head underneath also has eyes. So that's weird. All right. Let's do, let's do Storm. I love Storm. Storm is great. You know, Storm is like the one that you boy Zach always talks about. Like, you know, he, he says some like goofy things about this, but this is like one of the things I definitely agree with where he's like, you know, when we were, when we were fans of X-Men in the eighties, it was led by an African woman and that's Storm. That was the leader of the X-Men team. Uh, and she was, she was for the part, <clears throat> for the part of the comic that I was most into, she was uh, in a, romantic relationship with this Native American dude, Forge. And he was my favorite X-Men. Um, and that was great. That was a great, that was a great run. That was a great series. That, that's the X-Men that all of us love. All of us, uh, like 40 year old white dudes, um, who are complaining about the comic being bad. This, this is, this was our X-Men. So these figures are great. Uh, I'm not going to say a bad thing about Forge or, Storm, um, because they, well, I'll say a couple bad things. So, so Forge, Forge, I have, I have another version of this Forge. Um, he's molded with like translucent plastic. This one is just like silver. Um, and, uh, oh yeah. Uh, Kevin Fuckhead asks if I, um, also collect trading cards as a kid. Yeah, I collected all those, the Marvel trading cards, uh, and the X-Men trading cards. I still have most of those back in Anchorage, but I'm gonna have to dig them out. Um, last trips, I dug out all my comic books and the cards are gonna be a little more challenging. Um, 
But anyway, back to Forge. Uh, so this is just like a repaint of that other Forge. You know, he's got another play feature where you like flip flip his. It's like a draw, like an action holster draw. Like so, you, so it doesn't it doesn't work very well. I don't like this at all because it's like the gun, it like ostensibly has this holster, but it's not, the holster doesn't really work. He just presses the gun up against the holster, and then it's like a quick draw feature. He's the fastest gun in the West or something. So let's see how this works. Ready? Five, four, three. Come on, you bastard. There we go. One. Oh, jeez. So that sucks. All these play features, like, really, really, really suck. And there's nothing worse than, like, buying a toy with a built-in play feature that makes the toy, like, clunky and worse construction and then also have it not work and suck, um, like, right out of the package. So that's my bad word about Forge. Then again, I do love this character. I love this, uh, I mean, this figure looks really good. It's a really good likeness of Forge, you know, for what these things are. And he's going to go, you know, he's going to go great. He's going to go great with Marvel Girl. Uh, kind of. You can see, like, so so these ones, they're, they're kind of like blue and yellow. And then the other ones have, like, a little different color yellow. And it's actually black with blue washes. So it's not a, it's not a perfect match, but... They still look pretty good. Storm also has a something in her back, but I don't know. I can't. I don't think that's a play feature. I think instead, maybe she was re like molded from parts where there was a play feature, and then the play feature was taken out, and it left her looking like that. That's my that's my presumption, um, but I don't know that without um, I don't know that without uh, looking more into it for sure. Got two guys left. I got Jubilee and Gambit. Uh, I think I'm going to do Gambit first. Mosheri. You know, so Gambit. Oh, that's interesting. Gambit has like a righteous head sculpt. Definitely uh, the Gambit that we all uh, know and love. Um, that's pretty good. He has a little like imperfection on his nose, kind of like the one I talked about with Angel, but not as bad. The other thing he has is he has these these like uh, hip joint like articulations, like Beast did, and 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 the same problem where like if I just kind of wiggle them a little bit, you can see that they, they are they are a little bit loose. So that isn't that is not preferred. Um, the other thing that I don't I don't like about this figure is his uh his fists they're permanently molded in fists um so i don't i typically typically do not prefer that on an action figure like even one molded fist um i like i like him to have open hands so i can put accessories in them but with these ones i'm not really going to do that uh so it's not really that big a deal but with him it's kind of a weird choice because he's you know he's his thing is like uh energizing things like cards and throwing them so you can't really can't really energize and throw anything uh, in that way. But he looks pretty good. He looks pretty good relative to the other guys. You, know, you can get like Gambit and Cyclops together. Uh, Jean Grey. Uh, Rogue. Uh, Jean Grey. Uh, Rogue. You know, that was like that was like all the 90s. Like all the guys and their girlfriends and being depressed about them or happy about them. It's very very sexy. X Men in the in the nineties was very sexy, as opposed to like now they talk about sex and sex, sexual identity a lot, but it's not sexy at all. It's like uh, like, like flat and desexed. Um, and then here's Jubilee, and Jubilee is great. This is like uh, very pleased to get like this version of Jubilee. You know, the iconic version of Jubilee is like that yellow jacket. There was the period, of course, where she was a vampire for a few years, which was not. Uh, there's not a period when I was like reading or collecting comics, so I don't know that much about it, but I do know that that happened. Um, and her articulation is very strange. Like she, she has like way more articulation than everybody else. Her arms can even go up. It's like, there's like multiple joints here in this shoulder socket. And this swivels all the way around. This swivels all the way around. This is like, this, this one might be the best of the bunch. Although then on the other hand, she doesn't have she doesn't have any elbow joints, so her elbows don't move at all. Everybody else everybody else has elbow joints, and she doesn't have any elbow joints. But at least she has knee joints. Unfortunately, they're very tight. Did you hear that snap? 
I thought I was going to break it just now when I did it. And the other one is very tight too. Let's try to do that without breaking it. See what happens. Oh, that was close. That was a close call. I could feel it like it wanted to break on me, but um, it gave at just the right moment. So if that ever happens to you, a helpful tip is you can take some boiling water, some hot water, put the figure in it or under it for uh, a few moments or a minute, something like that. Um, when the when the figure is loosened up enough, then you can that that will usually make it safe to bend. You especially need to do that with those Marvel Universe figures because a lot of those a lot of those will break on you. They're not um, built super super strong. Um, that's it, man. That's the whole set. So the best I can do, I want to do like one full setup with all these all these crazies. Just pull this out a little bit. It's got Jubilee here, some Gambit. Maybe get the try to get the tall guys in the back. Oh boy! So Gambit's having trouble standing up because of that joint thing, and I, I had to make him like stick his hips way out. That, that didn't look right at all. It looked like he was creeping on Jubilee. Let's get Warren over here with the wings. He's having a hard time standing up because of the heaviness of the wings. Beast will certainly have to be in the back. Put Iceman over here. Put Scott here. Let's, let's do his ruby red like visor pose so that he doesn't look completely stupid. I'm gonna put Iceman's arm up so that he can throw this snowball. Uh, let's put put Banshee in the back there. Wolverine is not quite as short as he should be. Maybe put Marvel Girl over there. Storm kind of, you know, I like that sh that shaved head look for Storm. Storm has had like a like every awesome haircut. She had the shaved look, shaved head look. She had the um, the uh, mohawk. Put Super Scroll over here and Talos. Um, and that's that's not really enough light to enjoy that. So why, this is why I wish I had my, my phone. I wish I could still do these broadcasts with my phone, YouTube. What's wrong with you? Um, maybe what if I turn on this light? Will that help at all? Helps a little bit. There we go. That's it. That's the end of the live stream, guys. I, I opened them all. That's, that's your X-Men team. Uh, thanks for watching. And please go to Indiegogo uh, and back Cyborg USA. Now available. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.